What's up, guys? Doug Polk here, and welcome to our podcast today. We are joined by uh, a player that a lot of people have been talking about over the last few days. Martin Cabrell joins the podcast. Martin, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Doc. So let's let's just kind of jump right into this here. Um, a few days ago, for people that are not aware, I don't think there's too many of those guys, but just to give a little recap of this, uh, some clips of you playing a $250,000 tournament at the World Series of Poker went pretty viral in the poker community. Um, clips of your antics at the table, some of the things that you were saying, uh, some of the ways that you're pressing on cards, some of the ways that you're standing up and looking at, at chips at the table or other people's hands or whatever was going on. And of course, some of the action in those hands as well. You played some hands rather unconventional. And so today uh, I wanted to have you on. You actually reached out to me to be totally transparent. You you talked to Joe Ingram. We got in, ta in, in contact. We've talked over the last couple of days. And I thought it would be great for us to have a discussion here on YouTube so that you can tell your side of the story. Obviously, a lot of people are weighing in with their thoughts, but I do think that it would be good for you to at least express yourself and about what happened. Yeah, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. And yeah, basically uh, for me, the preparation was easy. Yeah, I'm just ready to to, to ask whatever you want. And yeah, what I uh, yeah uh, personally, I find uh, the things which happened ridiculous. Uh, it's like uh, yeah, it's kind of like uh, crazy. I just wanna like live my life and uh, yeah, not be attacking by some bullies for no ever reason because I obviously didn't do anything wrong and I didn't break any rules. There was like uh, yeah uh, no warning no penalties in this tournament in other tournaments yeah probably i get some like one hand penalty for i don't know what but like i never was yeah there were so many accusations which are just like really easy and true that i was like uh, banned from somewhere uh, marking the cards uh, all the all my life i have like the record of 15 years playing poker sometimes i'm not playing professionally like you are or you you no you are smart enough to not play professionally as well and do other things so i do a lot of other things like uh yeah like like you yeah you are doing your upswing you are doing uh, your card room so i'm doing my businesses uh yeah we can talk about it later i do so many different things and i'm not just a card player but i have 15 years uh, i think of playing cards sometimes more sometimes less i was on countless streaming final tables uh hey I get complaints. Maybe I was like screaming too much. Maybe I am taking too much time or whatever. Yeah, you can call me that. Everything within the rules, I never get the complaint. Hey, Martin is doing something which is like really against the rules breaking. And if if that, hey, please ask the floor man, ask him, hey, Martin is doing this wrong, point it out. But this what happened right now with uh, I would say these guys, uh, the pointless accusations without no evidence, which can't be found because like, obviously I have the advantage that I know all the information, but just being ridiculous to me, I obviously want to live my life because uh, this is like crazy how in this uh, society, uh, like one tweet can like go with this shit storm and like, I need to express uh, to my kids, hey, yeah, why, why they are, why all the media are writing that that, that is cheater. It's like so crazy that uh, some people can ruin uh, somebody's life like this and uh, reputation. So yeah, obviously I need to defend myself. I think I can, I, I think it's kind of like, I wouldn't say easy, but it's pretty straightforward for me. I just say what happened um, probably because, uh, yeah, because I need to protect myself. I need to do maybe some uh, legal steps, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's just being crazy to me. I would be much happy uh, to whatever, play poker, enjoying a holiday with my family here and everything. So yeah. Happy to be back to normal life. All right, so let's let's get into this then. I, I want to start off with saying that I, I do think it takes some guts to come on, and and you know we're going to have to talk about some questions that are uncomfortable and to address the 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 posts that are online. I mean, you, you of course, when you say one tweet that really went went viral, uh, sure. while while Robles' tweet did did kind of kick off a lot of the stuff on Twitter, there were a lot of posts on on forums like Reddit or Two Plus Two or things like that. So I wouldn't say that it was just isolated that individual tweet there there are many other people that have weighed in here a lot of other pros that kind of stepped in there but i want to get into that a little bit later i kind of want to just kick off with some pretty direct pointed questions here that i think you know we at least get your your stance on on some of the core stuff that i think is going to be important in this so i'm just gonna kick it off with have you ever cheated in poker 
no, I never cheated in poker and my plan is never cheated in poker. Actually, my plan and my nature, uh, I don't even have this word in my vocabulary. So basically, I'm not planning to cheat. And uh, yeah, I'm just not doing the wrong things. That's just how I'm living my life. So it's pretty simple. It's just like out of my mind that uh, this is even like being discussed. Okay, so you, you've not cheated in poker and the event, the 250K World Series of Poker event, you did not cheat. I know, I know I'm just, just to clarify this out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I did not cheat in the 250K happening, whatever, a few days ago, where I unfortunately finishing third, which is not good, but whatever. Yeah, I think I think third place is, is probably okay. Um, have you ever been banned from a venue or series that offers poker? Uh, no, I was not banned from any venue. I was not uh, all, all the stuff which was uh, saying that I get like caught or alleged of some uh, marking cards cheating. It's complete bullshit. I don't even know how to react. It only that say that it's completely untrue. You can contact all the people who are running poker rooms all over the world where I was playing and like ask. I think, uh, yeah, obviously I have my reputation, which I'm aware of it, of my uh, not standard play. And uh, obviously, yeah, I, I know my play style and everything but uh, yeah i had never a problem that uh, somebody say hey my, like uh, like before this ridiculous thing happening nobody ever would even closely call me something like cheater which is really behind the line because yeah you can call me i'm annoying i'm completely fine with that you can call me that i play under unorthodox play whatever uh yeah that i'm doing like weird things like yeah i, I know how i'm how i'm perceiving but yeah the funny point is that before this tournament when this starts to go crazy and viral, I was doing these things on all the clips last 10 years, whatever. Uh, yeah, doing uh, touching cards weird way, touching chips. Weird way, uh, I don't know the bottom, my nose, whatever. And I'm aware of it. Yeah, it's just me. I wouldn't like, uh, yeah, it's just me. And I, I have personally no big problem with that. And like, yeah, I think it all starts when somebody really dislikes me, which I can I can understand. Yeah, some people like some other people. I like most of the people, by the way. Yeah, but maybe you like some people, maybe you dislike. And if you go with this attitude, yeah, maybe you start to see sniffing something. But uh, never ever somebody called me a cheater, and this is really out of the line and really ruining my life. Uh, yeah, family, family, friends, business. It's it's really crazy. Yeah, I, so obviously there's two separate things here, right? Which is, are you annoying? And um, I, we do certainly have more evidence of that. And are you sure. a cheater, right? Which are sure. two separate, two separate conversations. And I, I agree. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 we'll, we'll we'll get into both a little bit too. But I just wanted to, to kind of just start off here with getting a clear on the record response for you on the cheating allegations from people across the board. Sure. Sure. So, so um, my next question would be: so during the event, kind of going into the event itself, there were a lot of clips where you pressed into the cards. You either press the center of the card, you press the corner of the card. Um, there's a few different clips that are going around with you pressing pretty firmly into the cards. Why do you do that? Yeah. I mean, like touching cards or other things like chips or parts of my body in the weird way. I can't really control it. I know I'm doing it sometimes. I don't know the word for it. Maybe it's like a tick or whatever. I'm just doing that unintentionally. I'm trying to focus on my game and be in the zone, which for me is like that. I'm like thinking about so many things uh, and like that. And I will try to be more careful in the future that people don't think that I'm doing something wrong. I'm pretty sure from, uh, okay, of course, I. I didn't mark any cards yeah i didn't yeah it's not possible to find them because i didn't mark it and i strongly believe the other people didn't do that it would be ridiculous for everybody to do that on the biggest stage of poker on the biggest tournament of wsop under the uh, top management running it and surveillance and everything so i feel that ridiculous i'm obviously not experienced like a marker of the card so i don't know how is it work but from my even technical like um, okay amateur point of view i think my uh, it's not technically even possible my nails are are not from iron so how on earth i can see some marks around the table when nobody sees anything when they are holding their cards for me it's like a really uh, d- a ridiculous discussion but yeah and yeah i don't know if i should apologize that i like sometimes like touching or my uh, my fingers are sweating and the cards like i don't know even like, like what to say okay happened uh, it's probably happened to a lot of players as well it probably happens to me in the past and pr- maybe because i'm like in the zone and i have like this like i would say like ticks or wh- whoever you call that i don't know yeah it's not yeah like- we, we, we talked about this like 
when you do something that you're not fully aware of. Like, so for me, I do the thing where I stretch my fingers and I go sure, like this sure. a lot. Yeah. And, and I, it's not I, like yeah. an excuse. I don't, uh, I don't even carry this, but I'm not doing anything wrong. So I think that, and always when somebody has problem with what I'm doing, what I suggest, and please, uh, all the players who shall ever be playing with me at the table, hey, please ask me or call the floor and say, hey, I am not happy what Martin is doing. Hey, can you address it? I am, I'm like uh, positive. I am uh, going playing within the rules. And basically, that's it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I saw the clips. I yeah, I find it like uh, I would say a little funny. I saw even some edited clips. It was not that funny, but uh, yeah, this is my explanation. Nothing nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So the the problem I think people have here, and I'm not saying that you're doing this intentionally, but we had a uh, one of the larger card manufacturers called Faded Spade. They used to do World Series of Poker's cards for the show, and now they are a different company i think but he came on this channel and he talked about like marking and pressing on cards and things and he says what they look for when they catch people that are cheating i'm not saying that you're cheating but they press in a way that creates a reflection on the card that creates a different light angle and he said that that's the thing that they have to watch for so can you see how like people i'm not saying that you did and world series poker has the decks right like if let me let me put it like this if it was obvious that you were doing that, they would get the decks and then they would ban you, right? They sure. would arrest you. I, I, so I'm, I, not, I, I'm, not, I'm not accusing no. you. What I'm saying is this guy came on and he said that's what we look for for okay. when people are cheating okay. because it creates a reflection of light on the card. So can you okay. see why to other players that's concerning, right, when they hear that and they see those clips? Can you see why that would create that concern for people? Okay. I, I see the point that people can think about a uh, very wild, thing, uh, wild um, set of things which can happen. I can understand it. The point is that I'm pretty sure that, like nothing can be found because I didn't do anything. Maybe somebody else, but like I didn't do anything. That's the point. So uh, I have the advantage that I know what I am doing or what I'm not doing. So that, that's one thing. Uh, I can understand there are some, some ways how to probably like cheat in poker. I'm aware of it. I highly doubt there was any cheating in 250k tournament this year, last year or whatever. Or yeah, I highly doubt. That's my personal. I am a feeling, I'm feeling comfortable playing these events i don't feel cheated the only maybe thing which i'm not want to address too, too much yeah maybe if too much players have swapping 50 percent all together i don't like it too much but in no limit it's probably okay and i'm not saying it's that this is the my maybe maybe uh, maybe that and uh i mean i I would, would say that like poker is pretty clear game. I know these Robbie scandals, whatever, but I feel that people overreacting, that's the, just the nature of the people. They're overreacting. Uh, they are love to have scandals. Uh, good for you, Doc. I am crossing f fingers crossing for you that <laughs> these things happening a lot because yeah, it's amazing that in uh, 15 hours, uh, 500,000 uh, people watch your video. I'm happy for you. But uh, I think that this is that. For me, I would rather be a private person of course, when I'm doing yeah. stuff like that and business, uh, I can't be, but yeah. So, so I, a lot of things to address there, but I want to go back to my question, which is mm -hmm. the card manufacturer came onto my channel and said, if you press in the middle, like the way that you were doing, that is something that can create an angle of light okay. reflection. So okay. if I'm a player at the table and I see that, how am I supposed to feel when I see it? Even if you're just like in your own world, you're just doing your own thing. You're, sure. you, you see, you see like how that could have an impact on other players at the table and okay. the way that. Okay. Do they feel okay. about it? What are your thoughts okay. on that? Okay. So f f I am not sure if I understand your question, but I will try to address. There are two meanings sure. of it. So one, one of them. I, I don't know how to mark cards. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So whatever, whatever you're saying, probably true, and I don't know. And how other players feel about that, mm, I wasn't thinking about it too much. When you're pointing it out, yeah, I, I, uh, if I would be in the position of the players and uh, have the feeling, if I would be in the, in the position of some player who feel uncomfortable, I would definitely point it out. I would call foreman in a second. That's what I would do because I'm, I'm not hesitating to call the foreman when I feel uncomfortable at the table. So I would do definitely that and say, hey, please, can you kind ask Martin not to be doing uh, these things and so and my or, or only directly ask me and I would say hey sorry guys sorry guys uh, like um, yeah I, I will do my best not to do that anymore this is my that's a good question, actually that's a great question you, you bring up a really good point at any point in the tournament did someone ask you to stop pressing the cards no nobody was speaking that's on this topic weird. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, only, 
there was like some indirect thing when I think Chance pointed out that there was a rule made it for me. I don't know. I was not at the table when they said that standing rule. I'm still not sure how was it. I was I was not hearing that we can't stand in the table. The thing I, they were referring to was in my understanding that we can't go uh, if we need to, to use our phones. We can we need to step outside the table. Maybe I misheard it from the point that they said to me I can't stand when I which I did one time. I never stand. Uh, again because obviously if there are rules i need to follow that i like that's that's yeah. it basically i'm following the rules if i break the rules and somebody says hey martin this is the rule you need to do that i never say hey fuck uh, I, I i say okay i will do my best yeah like um i yeah hey this is so pretty simple i think if i put my 10 year old daughter here she can answer your question because it's like really straightforward like really well, let's well, for the sake of the interview and the people, let's stick with you and not your daughter. But okay. uh, I, I see, I see you're saying it, it, it is a direct thing. So you talk about the standing. Let's kind of change gears and talk about the standing. So, at a couple of different points uh, in hand, you stood up and leaned over and and pretty closely got cl close to people's chips, cards, the person looking at at what what it was kind of ambiguous. I know we talked. You said you were looking at their chips, but it seemed like you're looking at cards in different angles. So what's the goal? Why are you standing up and and doing that to players? Like why are you okay. why are you standing up? Okay. So, first of all, I was never looking at the opponent's card. Why would I? I was always checking the stack and maybe reaction tells of the, from the persons, yeah. Of course I am doing that uh, and I think it's completely fine. I don't even know if I should like justify it and I understand I am doing it in a weird way. I understand, uh, sorry, I go a little bit more uh, to this. I understand that people can say the words, I never seen this in my life, what Martin is doing. I am not even like super proud of it, but somebody like must do uh, like the things on the on, on the side. And I understand it, okay? I play my way, My uh, I don't play GRO style like uh, other bots, whatever. GTO, uh, GTO. GRO style, I will explain you later, Doug, but I will teach okay. you. <laughs> All right. And uh, so this GRO style is not for me. I am trying to play my best game, but I'm very competitive. We can go for that later. And back to your question. Sorry, I don't want to uh, I don't want to go out of your question. So I was never looking at the cards. I was trying to get it. And uh, yeah, weird way. My personality is just like that. My game is just like that. I want to know the chips almost exactly because I can feel happy and in a zone uh, that I can make my good decisions on my side. Yeah, I'm just trying to focus on so much information while playing, not like other players who uh, study solvers and do not care too much about exploitative play or whatever. I'm really competitive, love the game, and uh, like this is what I'm doing. Yeah, I, uh, I love the game and challenge, and that motivates me uh, to play either it's 200. 50k tournament or 500 bucks tournament which i play yesterday and like basically basically i am like uh, yeah i'm like not like most of these people who attack me i am like not playing for the money primarily i play and do everything in my life because i truly enjoy it i was working yeah. hard to be in this position and i love smart people interesting talented people uh, so like uh yeah by the way in case uh, some of our watchers are like that please contact me thank you doc put my email there uh and hope that by cooperating with these people i can do things and poker or playing cards is just like fun for me i really enjoy it that's why i'm doing it if i do that too often i hate it by the way that's why i play several times a year yeah but this is what i do and i want to play my game hey i pay my buy-in doesn't matter if it's let's, 250 yeah let's go back to the standing thing though sure. so i've not played I, I play way more cash games than tournaments but i play a sure. chunk of both i've definitely played some tournaments when you play a tournament you kind of know how many chips people have because it's a nine-handed table. You see every hand. So you sure. see where they're going. You see, sure. you, see you, okay. you have an idea of like where the stacks are, what people okay. have based on all ins, based on pots that they're winning. Mm -hmm. And then some of these instances, like for example, the one when you're next to Brandon Stevens, you like lean over like directly, directly looking like, I mean, you might be saying you look at the chips. Your, your head was facing the cards. Maybe you were looking to the side at the chips. I don't really know, right? I don't know where you were looking. I can't but explain. Why, why when you're right next to someone, you clearly can see what the guy has next to you. Why, why do that? I don't understand. Okay, so uh, like I don't want to say like like, and it's even true. My eyes are not that good, but I was 
I know I see the clip. I it looks that I go to cars, but behind the cars there are the big chips, 500s, and I was just counting if it is 14 chips or 13. That's the simple. He was short, and it was important for me, as I am saying, for my decision. I, I want to know. And yeah, I, I I will not apologize for that. I am focusing on so many things during the game that even hand hand by hand, I am need to count it, and it's for like my yeah weirdness. I I wanna I wanna count it even repeatedly. I'm happy with that, and I will probably continue that. And one more thing, there is a WSOP rule. I don't, I can't uh, cite what number is it. That the stack must be visible in all the times. This uh, this rule, people break all the time. My stack always visible. If everybody has stack all the visible all the time, stack it nice in twenties. And if there are big chips and it's thirteen or fourteen, uh, by the way, David Peters does it. Yeah, when he has fourteen chips, he do five, five, and four. That's so easy and nice from him because it's so easy to count it. If everybody do that, I would never ask somebody. They never do that for more than whatever two seconds my look and this is it yeah but some people just enjoying to annoy me to covering the chips doing this shit so well, but, I, okay so a couple yeah. things on that though so you had at one point a massive pile of chips it was sure. a you had you had a fortress going okay sure. for everyone loves to have a fortress i understand but yes. when you have that many chips people can't see your stack very easily and dan smith asked you hey uh, floor can you color her up you said i don't want to color up and he said, well, I can't see how many chips you have. So why not color up then if it's making people easier for others? Is it basically you're saying that because okay, other please, people don't do this, sure, sure, I'm not going yeah. to? Or like, what are you saying with that? No, 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 no. Please watch the clip carefully. I was like uh, maybe a little joking with Dan, but I said, yeah, do whatever you want. That Dan is happy. Yeah? This is what I said. Nothing, nothing. Wrong. I was not, I had no problem. Actually, I was forced to do color up. Then they asked Chance and he said, no way and they run it like this but it's hey it's okay for me i respect it some people run the tournaments here i'm okay with it i i can assume i never said uh, they can't do anything not not true i i said maybe i prefer not to do something not in this case yeah because i said whatever makes them happy yeah not mm, watch it carefully really that's mistake mm -hmm. okay all right all right we can we can look the, the clip back i, I don't sure. want to sure. debate specifics like clips yeah, or whatever sure. um okay so so I guess we, we talked about the stand, the standing up thing. Um, in one of the clips, your fingers stick to the cards, and you go like this with your fingers, and each one the card sticks to your finger. Sure. I, I can't remember having seen that before on many streams where where your hands stick to things. Now I will also say I am a very sweaty human being, so I understand the plight of the sweaty humans. Okay, I can't wear socks without or flip flops without socks because it's gross. So I ha I, I understand sweating. But sweat normally doesn't stick to cards like that. So what what was it that stuck? Was it just sweat? Or why did your card stick to your fingers like that when you went to fold your hand? Okay, I will try not to smile because like this is like a very serious topic for me, attacking me. But I will answer your question. But I'm smiling because it's like really ridiculous questions for me. So I will say the truth, obviously. So from what I think, I was really surprised as well why that when like the car sticking up. So I was, yeah, I was then do this because I was sweating. There were the lights and that's it. And probably happens to me uh, one time before, probably happens to me in the future. Uh, I saw people happen as well. I don't know what to say even to that. Yeah, I was sweating my fingers, nothing strange about it. And I, I sorry, I don't know what to say more. Uh, yeah, things happen. I was sweating my fingers because it was hot from the lights there. What should I say more? Yeah, I that's what happened. I understand. Um, and, and by the I way, don't say, uh, sorry, I don't want to say your question is dumb, but I I don't know how else to uh, answer it only with the truth. So that's it. Well, yeah. I, I, so I, I don't feel I don't feel personally attacked over any of this. My job as the interviewer, I think, understand. is to try and understand. take everything understand. people are saying and understand. say it to you, so you can respond and sure. and do and do you do, do the audience the service of like things they they think and you the service of being able to respond. So I'm not taking an opinion. If you think it's a fucking stupid question, totally. Fu I mean, you're not you're not upsetting me with that. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, um, I I wouldn't expect that I would give any other answer because yeah. Okay, let's let's continue. Okay, so moving moving forward, let's talk a little bit about um, the rail on day two because that that became a little bit of a conversation topic mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were on the the secondary feature table on day two where uh, you have a, a lot less distance between the rail and the players and you had a bit of a rowdy rail. People were, were leaning over. They were they were kind of huddled over. You could see in any shot of the players, there was lots of people behind. Some people have talked about, you know, mm -hmm. was there signaling? Were there people behind? What, what were your, what was your thought on, on the rail uh, during that event or during that table? 
Uh, yeah, uh, if I like uh, understand what you are referring, when we are two table and we play in that middle table, which is really, I, I think the WSOP doing in general a very good job, but this was really not designed well. I was speaking even with Mori about that. Uh, yeah, the rail was uh, to that. And I was uh, I was feeling uncomfortable that people can see my car. That's why I was really like, uh, like going down and like not to see. Even some of my friends then tell me they see nine of spades uh, from my hand, which I was really uncomfortable that they told me and yeah i would say uh, i'm suggesting that it should be yeah one meter more like uh, distance and it would be all fine and so on and uh, yeah that's basically my take i i didn't like it uh, probably some other players didn't like it as well my seat and uh, i think dan smith seat was uh, the worst one seats were possible it, it would be like that i was uh, yeah i was in the best position so yeah i was trying to protect my car and uh, yeah what else i can do with that i was like saying to the foreman hey yeah it would be better hey but what should, what they can do in that uh, in that uh, moment, yeah, they can't say real. Hey, go go fuck yourself. Yeah, not not possible. Yeah, that's fair. Let's we'll, we'll move on to another one here. So, uh, I watched some of day two. I watched some of day three. Day two, you were just going wild. You were playing tons of hands. You were playing all kinds of spots. You were you were really loud. You were talking to people a, a, a lot. You were in the mix. You were you were playing incredibly loose. And then day three at the final table, it seemed like you were playing a much more conservative, reasonable, more normal sort of game. And what? I was quiet. And you were you were more quiet than before. I'm joking. Uh, okay. Continue. Well, but then then before, I mean, you know, okay. I, I don't, maybe, maybe slightly. I didn't watch all of it. I just saw clips and stuff okay. here and there. Continue. You seemed more in line. Uh, okay. Um, was there any different? What caused the difference in the in the at least the play? Let's talk about the the play and not the talking. I suppose. Okay. Was there, okay. what caused the difference in play from your final day to day two? Okay. So. I think you can answer for myself, but I will do that for myself. So basically, there are different phases of tournament, like with the bubble play, where I, when I have chips, probably play like almost every hand. Then there is final table when when I'm in certain positions, I probably play tight. And then there is this card distribution. Sometimes you have a lot of cards which you can play, and sometimes you have unplayable shit which you need to throw away. So, uh, yeah, is it yeah. a good enough question? I sure, yeah. that's fine. So, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Honestly, I mean, it's, okay. it's not a great question. Yeah. No, I will say one more thing about my overall play. Yeah, I'm trying to play my best all the time. Probably I'm not succeeding all the time. I'm not claiming I'm the best player in the world, but uh, I think I am. Yeah, I am very unpredictable player, and uh, I do I play some sports which some people call unorthodox, or they wouldn't have balls for it, which I which I'm happy for. Yeah, the hand with, against Arthur was pretty funny in the way that normally it would be play of the summer. Now it's uh, probably I look at these cards and no, he doesn't have it. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Hey, what can I say? Uh, I am totally fine. Find that I don't. I I will not have the play of the summer. I am more sad that I didn't win the bracelet. Yeah, that's my comment on that. Yeah. So what was your thinking in that hand? You're talking about the eight eight five flop, right? Okay. Or it went it went bet raise three bet and you four bet buffed the flop on eight eight five with king queen. Sure. So sure. can you walk okay. us through what the logic was in that play? Because to, to an outside viewer, you look at that hand, you're like, what the hell is going on here? Sure. Okay, so now because you are a nice guy and it's a stream, how many people watching, by the way? Uh, we have about 6,000 people currently watching. Only? Okay, then I will not disclose it. No, I will do short ex short exception. Otherwise, I will not teach you my poker strategy for free. Okay, so yeah, that's it. And probably you can't even buy it. So I don't like to share, but uh, here I do like short e exception. Yeah, yeah. Arthur is probably the only guy on the table which I would be playing this kind of shit because it's like completely not GRO street poker, as you probably know. Uh, my hand selection, probably not optimal in the spot. But how many aids this guy can have? Yeah? comparing to me mm, i like my chances and yeah i i think i kind of know his play and yeah obviously it was very risky but uh, basically he goes all in there which actually i think he's capable of doing that just he shove it yeah because like i think he's the type of guy he can have aces there and just call me there and yeah probably then i would like yeah give up on the turn uh yeah but uh yeah he he just calmed down and uh, fought on that. So I was obviously pretty happy with that. And yeah, it was crazy hand. Yeah, probably something which not happened. And yeah, that's even more powerful because like, how can he expect I have 
uh, I would say such a big, uh, yeah, you can call that whatever. You, you know, it's, uh, yeah. But it was crazy hand, yeah. Uh, definitely not, do it, not doing this against David Peters because, like, yeah, uh, there is no no his range. He would never bet, uh, what is it, bet three bet on the flop. Yeah, he, he has, like, zero range there, yeah. So, but Arthur made it, uh, kudos to him because actually it was good play. And, yeah, I was luckily enough that I find my lost balls there. And, yeah, it was it was pretty fun hand, well, obviously, with good result. I don't know if I would say it's as good of a play when you get the bluff four bet facing it, but yeah, I mean, in theory, it's nice to have some 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 bet three bets if you think the player is check raising wide. But when people come over the top on it, it makes the play a little bit worse. I would say. I I completely agree with you. If he do that to the maniac like me, I f I think it's not recommended. I can give this coaching for free. So uh, one th other thing that people talked about um, is when you play, you check your cards very frequently. You 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 constantly recheck your cards, recheck your cards, recheck your cards. Sometimes uh, up to six times a hand, you'll check your cards. Even more, what, even more. Even what, more. Why, why do you check your hand so frequently? Yeah, S same thing, yeah. It's like I'm trying to be in my zone. I know it sounds weird, but I'm just saying the truth. I'm trying to be in my zone and I do things which makes me like comfortable and f makes my brain just like goes through all the information and like that. And like, yeah, I mean, it's up to me. I paid my buy-in, I play my game, and it's up to me how, how I use my whatever 30 seconds or whatever time it's giving me for decision. So, yeah, that's it, yeah? No particular reason. It's kind of like, again, maybe like some tick. I'm obviously remember my cards after I see that twice or three times, yeah? Sometimes, obviously, like I need to recheck on the river, but that's not the case, yeah? Sometimes even when I have big preflop decision, I, I just like... I just need to think about my decision and it calls me down that I'm like playing with chips or playing with my cards, whatever. Yeah, I, I understand most people not, don't do that, but what? Uh, am I breaking any rules? Yeah, I mean... No, you, I mean, you're, you're obviously not breaking any rules with that. I'm just, I'm just wondering it. why you look at your cards so that's frequently. That's the explanation. Yeah, pretty okay. simple. Alrighty. Um, so, so let's kind of change gears on the topic a little bit rather than just all the individual instances. I think we kind of addressed all of them. I want to talk about the impact that these things kind of all have together. Can you see why this could make other players at the table feel like you're cheating? Okay. Mm. Okay. This, never, this ever, ne ne never, ever in 15 years, somebody even like, not say, but even like, like think and say it in some indirect way. Ah, this Martin guy, yeah, it's something sniffy about it. I never hear accusation like that. This is completely crazy uh, to me. Maybe uh, people talking uh, together, uh, like, um, um, of the table about me, I don't know. I well, never... Uh, Martin, in 2017, there were people that said this about you. Because I played well, the Super High Roller Bowl. Remember mm -hmm. that year, it was a $300,000 tournament? And people were worried because you were behind tables where Leon was playing. And people were concerned. And I remember that specific. I, I don't remember if I said anything about it or at the time or whatnot, but I do remember multiple people coming to me and being very concerned that you were there. So I wouldn't say no one has ever. I'm not saying that's proof or something that you okay, that you so, were involved. But I have okay. heard the, that story before. Okay, so first of all, I haven't played a tournament. Even Justin Bonomo said I did. So that's one point. Second point, Leon was playing the tournament. And I was there with him to support him, maybe giving him advice because at that time he was, um, I would say, very recreational player comparing now he's like, I'm not saying strong player, but he's uh, definitely more accomplished player. And I was there. I was not standing behind anybody. I can understand people. And I remember people were complaining and so on. And when the floor said, Martin, you can stay only here, not here. I was obviously respecting that. And I can understand people feel uncomfortable. But again, like this is like, yeah, okay. But to my play, when I was playing any tournament, Nobody ever call me cheater or think some put some allegations or whatever because like there was nothing they can do. Uh, people call foreman on me every time. Hey, this guy stalling too much. This guy uh, talking way too loud. Something like that. I I uh, happened to me. Foreman said to me, Martin, please calm down a little bit. Uh, Charlie is the best from WSOP. He always smiles with his big smile and says, Hey, Martin, be nice. Yeah, and it's like yeah, you know, it's friendly and everything. And even. Please, if you you or any other spectators will be ever um, with me at the table, I mean, we are human beings. If you don't like what I am doing or other player doing, 
please ask him hey martin can you be be i don't know because i i'm never rude i'm not impolite i feel okay there can be few exceptions but like if if that happen what i do is that i stop and i apologize if it, if it is like that when somebody attacking me for nonsenses and saying bad things about me i fight back maybe that's possible i need to defend myself but nobody ever like did that hey you martin you cheater whatever uh, obviously happened to me yesterday three three people called me a cheater at WSOP. Uh, I what sh what should I do about that? I understand it because this uh, bunch of guys putting like this on the internet, which is like accusations with no evidence, and there can be no evidence. But that's my comment. Sorry, I'm too. Well, I, I, the, I mean, the word evidence and the word proof are different, right? There's no proof, but like they might view the clips as evidence. Like evidence and proof are kind of different, right? Is that is I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm I don't want to. I'm not putting in English, but it, it, I disagree with you. Uh, I'm makes, saying. I'm saying there is nothing somebody can say where I break any rules and yeah. moreover cheating is much worse than maybe occasionally breaking some small rules. But I never did anything like that. But the other side of this is right. The clips look not great. If they if they looked good, we wouldn't have this big thing online, right? Of course. I, I was like already answer answer all your questions concerning I, the clips. I, I, what should I say more? Okay. I, I'm, okay. Not, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying one you point, cheated. One point, I, I, one all. point. Okay. Why, why in the hell people which were playing at the table, big stage table, 200 quarter million buying tournament, why they did not complain during the hand? They complained after I bust them from the tournament. I, I don't want to put the names, but three guys which I busted or already almost busted from the tournament. Yeah. One of them, six bet shoving sixes, even my kings go home and probably emotionally written the original tweet, which is crazy. Then the second guy makes an interview after I bust him from tournament. What should I do about that? And uh, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I sh I don't know what to say but, more. But 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 Martin, I'm not I'm not saying what happened. Okay, putting that to the sure. side, I'm talking about what it sure. looks like. Obviously, this looks bad because it had such a, an intense reaction from the poker community when they see you doing these things, right? So do you care about that impact that that has on the other players at the table? I, I'm not understanding the question. I understand people it overreacting I mean, and right. like half of the internet which has no clue and don't know me like a person. By the way, okay. nobody of these people know me like a person yet and they know me only from poker table. If I'm actor and I play villain, probably people think I'm killing uh, people in real Let life. Let me reword. Let me reword this. Okay. Sure. Let's say you're playing at a table, and someone is doing something where you think there's a percent chance that they're cheating. Okay. Let's say it's three percent. Let's say it's six percent. Sure. Let's say it's two percent. Sure. As a player at the table, can you understand why, or can you understand why that's going to make people unhappy? Like, what do you think about the player experience okay. with the other people okay. at the table? Okay. That's a clear question for me. I can understand it can make people unhappy. I will put it to myself. If I feel somebody can be doing bad things, uh, even 1% chance, what I would do personally is I would call the floor and try to speak about it and then do maximum effort not to be affected by that and play my game. This is the maximum I can do. I don't even know what more I can do. I can like complain officially, please, this guy doing something wrong, please do something about that. Because I'm not the one who is running the tournament. There are officials which are paid for that. They do, I think, a really incredible good job and they are running tournament very professional way. I think the WSOP brand is really great. And basically that's what I would do in that position. I am very rational man, I would say. So I don't put any emotions to that. Or I would just solve the issue. This is the maximum I do. And always when the issue is, when, the, when I am solving problem, I'm good problem solver. When I am trying to solve the problem, I do my maximum effort and then forget about it. That's what I do. I understand some people uh, are still it's in their heads and they do emotion about it. I, I don't know what to say. Hey, people, um, yeah, concentrate more on facts, whatever. I, I don't know, yeah? I, uh, well, yeah everybody, so like, can, everybody can live the li life which they want, yeah? That's it. So, like, for example, like Dan Smith talked about this and he said, like, when you think a player might be cheating, you don't want to play back against them because you're worried that they know what you have. And like he played a hand versus you where he threw bet you with ace, I think ace five suited or something. And you four bet him to 3.8 million. Like he made 1.1, you made 3.8 million. And then he had, he, he would normally maybe buff jam sometimes, but he was scared. You could see you, that you knew what he had. So, so can you see how it might impact other people at the table if they think okay. there's a chance, right? Okay. Okay. So my comment, I don't remember I was forbetting uh, the the uh, Dan Smith, so I think it's 
I, 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 I'm like, I have like pretty good memory with this, so I don't know. I think it's not happening, but I'm not 100% sure. That's my comment. And in general, I can understand it. People are bluffing me on final table. Arthur make very good bluff. Uh, Chris Brewer bluffed me there. And like, yeah, people bluffing me, of course. And that, that's it. And your point, yeah, I can understand it. Again, I'm thinking what I would do myself about that. Yeah, I would try to do whatever I'm protecting from this, that, and then I forget about it and play my game. That's it. And yeah, I understand it can be probably uncomfortable. I was not trying to... Uh, now, by the way, now it's good that now allegations is that I'm not cheater anymore. That's good news, probably. It's shifting. <laughs> now it's that I am trying to look like a cheater. That's golden. I don't have even like normal words for that, but it's that. So I'm I'm clarifying. I was not trying to look like a cheater and make people uncomfortable. I think it would be crazy, stupid, and I didn't did, do that. That's it. D did, during the tournament, were you aware that people started to think that you might be cheating? Uh, I, I when we had this discussion when I was uh, standing and Alex said something and then Chen said that we made this rule for you. I was like, yeah, I actually didn't read any tweets. Uh, my, uh, I just like somebody sent me the, that robot tweet and I was thinking, okay, uh, the guy is just sore loser. He uh, he bravely forbid, uh, forbid shoving sixes to my kings and go out, which was, uh, yeah, and okay, so I didn't pay any attention that it's huge, and uh, luckily my wife didn't told me because she knows about it, but uh, she d want me to concern on the tournament, so I was not aware of it, that there is some rumors and everything, and basically I'm just like in this like open book, uh, clean guy, hey, uh, nothing happened, so why should be worried how people can think I'm cheater when nothing happening? So but I was not uh, not aware of that, and from that time, okay, I was thinking they are crazy that they think that. Now I can, uh, I can understand that based on these false allegations, which are crazy and ruining my life and reputation, that normal ordinary people who doesn't know me can think, oh, that's suspicious, they can see the clips, whatever. I can understand it, yeah. Uh, and uh, as I told you when we had the f first call we, uh, we together, yeah, give me advice what I do, what, what I should uh, do with that. Yeah, I'm crazy about that. I don't want to spend my time and energy uh, solving this issue. Okay, even like taking uh, this hour for this interview, I'm not happy about that. Okay, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it can help somehow. It, it will help your channel. So fingers crossed for you. Well, but that's it. I, I think I think getting your side of the story out is also important. I think there's been a lot of talk from other people I am, about it. I'm, I'm I'm, okay, uh, philosophical, I highly doubting because I am like not real happy in this world where we are living because it's so crazy that I see that some like credible people, not in poker, but in general, can ruin some people's reputation. And it's horrible to me. I think people should be like aware that like <laughs> in this world of social media, it's like this, you do false allegations and how people, uh, I, am, I am actually somebody who can protect myself. But somebody can do nothing about that and uh, will have like whatever whatever ruined life for next ten years and it's real horrible. I I would like I would prefer to live in another life. I will I will actually put my life and my energy in life and time to like try to at least a little bit change it. But uh, yeah, this is the maximum I can do. But, I'm but very given sad but given that we are here, it is good for you to be able to have a voice on what happens so that people can choose Probably. to go to you. Rather I agree with you. Okay. Alrighty, so let's uh, let's go to the next one. Um, you talked about this a little bit earlier. So you sometimes play like three hundred dollar tournaments, and sometimes two hundred fifty thousand dollar tournaments. Why do you play such a massively wide range of tournaments? I I think I already answered the question, but um, there is no problem. Basically, I love poker. I think it's like beautiful mind game i love other games i love chess go everything yeah I, I i'm just enjoying yeah that's what i'm doing with my kids yeah i am not good like i'm probably not the father of the year in the terms that i care about kids like directly like just like you know but i am trying to show them the values and to just like show them what is interesting and for me like this uh, like mathematics probability things and the games is very interesting i like the game theory things and so on so for me poker is just very nice intellectual challenging uh, thing which I am happy to be part of, yeah? For me, poker, playing professionally, ooh, sorry about that. I would I would hate to play pro uh, poker professionally. I did it uh, 
<laughs> what is it 12 years for like year and a half and i was so happy that i can't do that anymore because this is not the lifestyle i want to choose and yeah secondary there is not enough money in poker that i would be motivated by poker wise so i am like you in this you do, you're running your businesses i am doing some uh, yeah technological data analyzing trading companies i'm doing esports i'm doing crypto hedge fund and uh, stuff like that i'm really enjoying working with smart people so this is my life yeah but i am still yeah. enjoying the poker the less I am playing that I'm more enjoying the poker. Sorry about it. Yeah. So you, you say these... to your sorry to your to your question. Uh, I don't really care if I play. Uh, yesterday I was playing uh, whatever whatever it was five thousand ten thousand people five hundred bucks by. I was really enjoying that. I play. Uh, yeah, I play my set against Flash Draw and was happy for the guy. Uh, he won. He was really sincerely happy, and I was. Hey, I was so happy because I have free afternoon. Obviously, I need to, to solve this shit. So it was that, and I can get at least a little bit of sleep because these last days was really tough. I, I am I am able to um, handle the stress pretty well, but what is really what is really stressing me is this, that my family and friends are really affected by all this shit because yeah, the biggest like newspapers in Germany or in US, I am the cheater hopefully with question mark. But my how should I explain my kids that like hey daddy is cheater? I'm so unhappy about this. I really uh, I'm really angry about this that these people attacking me. They can attack me now. The the yeah the chance even attacking my girlfriend and he's now he's like back, getting back that he's saying no I never said he's a cheater. I just think that he's pretending he's cheater. But then he says, how this uh, girl, how my wife can dating uh, this uh, cheating scumbag. This is so ridiculous. I think these guys uh, should take responsibility for these actions. And I am horrified that this can even happen in this world. So let's talk about some of the allegations from people that, that you're talking now and kind of segue at some point into the lawsuit that, that you posted about. So I guess let's, let's start off with the Andrew Robel tweet because I think he had probably the strongest words. And, and I think that kind of got some of the, the ball rolling on that. Um, he, he, and I, I don't want to misquote, but he basically said that like, he's seen you do this in many other tournaments. I think maybe even any, all of the ones he's played with you in what happened with Robo in the past. Have you, have you spoken with Robo directly? What, what made him say that you have done this in all these tournaments that he's been in? Okay, I don't want to speak about the names, but in general, I think, and you can take it for this case, I think high stakes player, especially this American community, they are very unhappy that I'm playing their tournaments and uh, yeah, coming once in a year and yeah, make a final table back to back of the uh, biggest tournament. And I was actually playing these tournaments directly from the plane, like uh, very tired with jet lag, which is funny. And uh, yeah, make final table two years again. And they are very unhappy that I take a couple of millions out of their prize pools. I understand that they are frustrated about that. It's probably very tough to play uh, play against me from their perspective. They would uh, much prefer that there will be another like let's say recreational players or boring uh, GRO bots or whatever and yeah I can I can feel that they don't like my manners maybe I can I can get it yeah nobody will be I am probably not the most likable guy I think I am very nice guy in my opinion but we can talk about it later maybe at the poker table I'm I'm not that much I can uh, I can put it and and for what is completely shocking for me that this can go goes that these people projecting it hey we need to get rid of him at all costs out of this our circle or whatever this is what i feel it's happening i i am not i'm not sure about this this is what goes and i am shocked what happened i have no good explanation i have no rational explanations of the of the uh, what these people are doing i don't understand it uh, I, I have them that they are very smart people and they should understand that their actions should have some consequences and that they are really bad to me and ruining my life, ruining my reputation and my family life and everything and my business. And it has big consequences, even money wise to my life and so on. So I don't understand it. But this is probably the motivation. I, I don't know, but this is what I'm suggesting. And I'm very, uh, very surprised 
to your question, never speak with Andrew Robo directly that we are not friends at all points. He is probably was talking some shit about me for years. He was never say to me, Martin, you do marking cards, you do anything wrong. Um, probably not even say, Martin, can you be quiet uh, more? But, uh, to which I would respond, sorry, Andrew, I will do my best and uh, play your game. I play my game. That's it. And uh, yeah, he said I was marking cards in every tournament we play together. It's a ridiculous lie. I don't even know how. Probably he was just emotional because it's lie and he knows it's lie for sure. And I, by the way, I now I'm not sure. At the beginning, I was sure he's not believing I'm cheating. Now I think 80% he's still not believing I was ever cheating. I, that's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that. So it's crazy that he put these accusations. And again, never in the past he said to tournament directors, to me, uh, that, hey, he's not happy with anything about me. And we play, I think, uh, yeah, we didn't play a lot together, actually. Five to ten times, I believe. I don't know, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically. Okay, so so um, talking about talking about the, the Robo thing a little bit and, and these tournaments, you said you played five to ten times. At what, at what tournaments did you play with Andrew Robo over the years? Like, I don't yeah. even think Andrew plays that many tournaments, right? What, what tournaments yeah. did you play with him? I think the 250 this year, 250 last year, and my memory is uh, like not that long. Maybe he did play some 100k Super Harvest somewhere, Monaco, WSOP Europe. I, I I don't know. I'm not tracking the tournaments I play with Robo together. From my, okay, I have pretty okay memory. From what I remember, three times, four times, we sitting at the same table. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So it's a joke, actually. Yeah, it's a joke. Are you going to continue playing high stakes tournaments moving forward? If I'm continuing, are are you planning on continuing to play? Because you've okay, been playing no, tournaments okay, for many years, okay. right? Sure. No okay. promises, Doc. I want. Uh, I understand you want me to be uh, be there. Yeah, no, I'm joking. But no <laughs> promises. If I feel I play, if I don't uh, have, uh, yeah, I'm very busy man. I'm doing like most of the time running my projects and companies and so on. So obviously for me it's all about the time. Actually, funny thing, this tournament we are now referring to. Monday that week, uh, I was like, I was uh, getting 16% chance that I can catch it because I was in Vienna doing some stuff and I really uh, hop on the plane last minute and I was able to to reach it and play it from the second day and so uh, the second bullet and yeah, I late reached it and uh, I was fortunate in, uh, again to be on the final table, which I'm pleased for. Uh, obviously, the third place I'm really not pleased with, but yeah, so the short answer, yeah, I, if I feel I... Uh, that will be fun for me and I want to play. I want to play. Hopefully there will be no problem with that. I see zero problem. How this like calling for me banning, I feel that completely crazy. Sorry, I'm repeating the word crazy. My English is not good. But because, because like nobody, I get zero penalty. I get zero warnings. Uh, I get nothing wrong. I didn't break any rules. I, I, I shouldn't be disqualified from any tournament, not even banned from property. This is like a complete joke. I don't understand how people even like think about it. Well, so there's a difference here between a, someone getting disqualified from an event and banning someone from your venue. Okay. To disqualify someone from an event, you're taking their money, right? So you have to have, you really have to have specific proof mm -hmm. to disqualify. You can't just do that. Agree. When Agree with you. Mm -hmm. But venues, if they think there's a chance you're cheating or they think that it's unselling to their other customers, I mean, clearly you have upset a lot of other customers in this tournament. If they think that it might hurt their business or be bad for them or upset people, they can choose to ban you. And a lot, and a lot, a lot of people have stated from this tournament and outside of this tournament that they want to ban you for this. So I guess like my question is like, can you see the impact that your actions are having on them? Like, it's not just the fact that they don't like your speech play. There are plenty of people that talk a lot and are annoying. Um, actually, maybe you can say I, I play like that. But there are people, plenty of people that talk a lot and can be annoying mm -hmm. that they don't okay. want banned, right? Okay. Okay. So first of all, I agree with you. You're completely right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, if somebody don't want to put uh, like, yeah, don't want to have specific player in the tournament, it's probably that right. And then, okay, I will not play it. Yeah. There were even like, yeah, some, some saying that I can, yeah, no, doesn't matter. Con I'm continuing. I believe I am never rude to any player uh, at the table. Possibly somebody can take my humorless jokes too personally sometimes. Happened a few times. Somebody told me uh, he felt uncomfortable. And of course, I immediately apologized and explained nothing uh, bad was meant. Number one. Ne Second, never rude. Never rude. Never. I think so. Never. That's, that's my opinion. Never. Not even one time. 
I, I, uh, I feel okay, like sometimes... Okay, okay let's, hey, let's put okay. it like that. There are people like uh, Phil Helmut, Tony G, uh, I don't want to put anybody to bad lights, but they are cursing. Yeah, Phil called me when we were playing that I am a fucking bad player, whatever. Hey, uh, yeah, everybody's smiling to that. I think it's against the rules, but doesn't matter. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm a grown man and so on. I think I was never cursing anybody, never, never did. I, I feel I did nothing wrong to people. And uh, to your question... I am pretty sure I am very positive for poker overall. I am extremely, I have extremely attractive style. style. Sorry, I'm a little bit down. Sorry, I am extremely attractive. <laughs> sorry, attractive style of play for spectators, both by playing not GRO style, a boring one, but also so much fun watching me playing, just doing pure fun and entertaining, style. and okay. that's it. So overall, I think, and by the way, my experience, my experience is probably less than in a super high roars but uh, tournaments when i'm playing people are i that's my opinion happy to, to have me on the table they are smiling uh, smiling to my jokes and so on and if somebody feels okay uh, uncomfortable yeah people just talk to me yeah so um, yeah there are some um, yeah people i don't want to use uh, better okay there can be some snowflakes which can take it bad and I'm like smiling that the people who claim they are top of the world of this ecosystem and the best players in the world, they can't handle this. Yeah, I'm literally so joking. I, I, uh, look, look, so so there is nothing against the rules to be rude to people. And certainly people you mentioned, like Phil Helmuth, like Tony G, they are rude to people frequently, right? Yeah. But to say you're never rude, I okay, mean... explain me rude. That, Sorry, it's, explain me, explain me. When I was rude, tell me example, one, tell me. I, I mean, just the way that you talk to some of the people in the hands, right? Or after the hands or like... That I'm joking with them. That I'm joking with them. But but like, you're 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 not like going to be an unbiased person. Like, if I'm a person and someone says something to me and it comes across as rude, it's rude to me. So, I mean, it might not be rude to you, but but it, it's how it comes across to other players, right? Sure. I don't know. I would have to, I would have to find an exact example and go through. But I just yeah, want you to understand right. that there, there are going to there are going to yeah. be people that find it rude the way that you sure. talk to them. Okay. Uh, that, I, that, I agree that, with that. That's, that. that's fine. Because because you can find it for our next interview. But you can find people who are offended by everything in this world. So uh, if I care about everything, I I need to shoot myself now. Yeah, Th that's not possible to uh, handle uh, things like that. Yeah. So I think I'm very nice person. Genuinely. Uh, especially out of table. I, I feel I'm genuinely nice guy to everybody. I didn't say a bad word to people at the poker table. Find the proof. Maybe in one in 15 years. I don't know. I am I am not easily to be tilted. So I, there is no reason I should be bad to people. I like people in general. I have like nothing in, in myself. I don't have nothing like hate to the people. Yeah. Even if I dislike somebody, I, I, I am very libertarian that, hey, they can live the life which they want. They can play whatever. They can say Say whatever shit they want. Obviously, if they speak, and uh, now it was the good example. If somebody offended my my wife, my family, oh, I am crazy about that, and I will. I, that really makes me crazy. Yeah, I'm I'm actually in a good mood now and trying to. I'm a little bit smiling on some things, but this is really serious, and I want to say that that people who are offending me, offending my my activities, my family, my business, should take uh should uh, be responsible and should take some consequences yeah, you, i mean i mean fa I family think it's very serious fa family is just fucked up like uh, no one should be going after people's families that that's just obviously over the line and i mean I like it's one thing to insult you um but to, to do to someone's family is just it's just wrong um mm -hmm. going back to talking about some other players scott siever tweeted the other day and he said that he he was in at an incident where he saw you marking cards do you know what he's talking about with that what no, he even thinks know. about? Do you see his tweet? About the, no, I didn't see the tweet. I didn't see the okay. tweet, and I don't know what he's talking about. And I can say one thing: yeah, uh, this guy you just mentioned, yeah, he doesn't like me for years. Uh, we were talking. Uh, to, yeah, you asked me if I talk with Andrew. I think almost never with Scott. We we he was very uh, be, uh, he was behaving very bad to me for I don't know which reason. Probably because he doesn't uh, like my presence. I have no comment on that. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. That's that's fair. Um, and, and again, maybe I, 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 don't wanna... I, don't have, I don't have great feelings towards this person because he's behaving really bad to me for over the years. But I don't know why he's doing that. But hey, I respect uh, he can live his life. And uh, if he offended me, it's okay. Yeah. If he would be uh, coming for my family, oh, I would be really bad. 
All right, so let's let's move on here. Let's talk about the lawsuit. This is the last thing, the last kind of piece that I want to get into. Um, I saw your attorney posted some things uh, or posted a uh, a statement that I believe you're sending to five different entities about this. Uh, the the people that you listed, I want to try and get this right. I think it was Bonomo, uh, Poker Go, Chance Corneth, Andrew Robel, Dan Smith, and I believe there was one other person that you that was mentioned in the lawsuit as well that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so what, with, with regards to the lawsuit, like, like what's your goal of a lawsuit and why did you choose these entities? Yeah, Doc, to this, I will really, I will really, uh, uh, really want to say that, uh, like to this, yeah, I would leave to, leave it to my attorney that he will un answer that I am definitely not an expert in law. I was uh, offering you that he can come to the stream and answer these kind of questions. So basically, yeah, I need to protect myself. Okay. Sure. I was... Uh, I, I am, I, yeah, I have the attorney, which I trust. And basically that's it. I have no comment from me. I don't understand the law. How is it working in the US? Yeah, that, I that's fine. Right. I, 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 I can answer all the questions, which I know the answer, but believe me or not, I don't know everything in this world. I know a lot of things, but not this one. So, so humble. Um, so I, I just want to say one thing then, if you don't want to dive into it, I, I did, I did, you don't have to respond to this. Um, but the list of people that w was mentioned here was kind of interesting to me because you have people that called you a cheater, which makes more sense. And then you have um, people that were just like, they think you might be, that seemed kind of, kind of weird to me. Like, you know, the, the Dan Smith and the Chance Corneth guys, like, you know, they both said you could be cheating, but you might not be. But like, those guys seemed kind of more on the fence. Whereas like the Andrew Robel, like, obviously he went for you. So like, I was a little, I was a little confused to see them all listed like that. The Bonomo thing, he's blocked me on Twitter. So I don't see too many of his tweets. So I didn't get to read too many of them what happened, but um, I just felt like the list of names seemed a little bit interesting that you chose some of those guys that you put in like Dan Smith and Chance Corneth. Okay. There, uh, my team was doing some evidence of what happened. I'm, hey, I, I, I will not be forced to live the life that I read all the tweets personally. I will not be doing that. I will not let uh, them ruining my life that much. So basically, to your questions, mm, I don't know what we, uh, who we put there exactly. I, I again, uh, we can, you, uh, my attorney can tell you why we choose that. And I feel that you are wrong about it uh, in the two cases, uh, which I cannot say. Yeah, I mean, some of them I will not put the name. Maybe you are smart enough to comment in a direct way, but like the consequences are so horrible and they have to know that and so on. Maybe it will be a, a, a more hard to prove. But even the guy who is now saying seven times on Twitter, I never call him a cheater, was saying that like how this girl's ca ca how this girlfriend can date this fucking cheating scumbag or something. It's horrible. It's horrible. And p these people, uh, let me finish this. It's just horrible that they don't, probably not even realizing how damaging is all this bullshit to me personally, to my family, friends and business. And it's crazy. It was really tough last few days uh, to me, but I am grown enough. But like, it's a really huge pressure to my family, to my kids. And I'm so crazy about that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's horrible uh, for your questions. Yeah, we choose somebody. Yeah, definitely we can increase the list by five more or cut one name. I don't know. I I have no uh, direct comment on that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's totally fair. You don't, you don't have to get into legal proceedings. I'll say in my experience, defamation case is very hard to win. Um, so I, I you definitely have an uphill climb in front of you. I, I don't know what your strategy is or all of the evidence or yeah. anything like that, but they are very difficult cases to win. Yeah. I actually, from the from the call which we had, uh, what is it, yesterday? I don't know. I am not sleeping, so I don't know which day was it. Uh, w w yesterday, when we had the call, uh, you mentioned this to me, like uh, like an advice that it's hard. Uh, from what I heard now, I feel that you, I'm not saying you're wrong, but maybe it's not that uh, black and white like you are saying, but yeah, we will see. But I definitely feel I need to protect my family and my business, and uh, that's it. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. Also, also, you're right in America. One of one of the it's hard to win these cases, in my experience, but you can sue anyone that you want at any point in America. So it's, you know, part of the this is what George Washington had in mind, I think, at the start. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was, it was mean, off color, off color. Yeah. All right. Um, OK, so uh, I guess then for for as far as my, my questions go, I, I, I think we kind of directly addressed everything. Is there anything that you want to say to the audience before we call it a call it a day? 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would like to say thanks for all the support which I get from all the people who said like nice words to me during class days. It was like incredible. I am for sure like uh, yeah the most popular poker player in the world right now, which I am like not happy too much. But it was really nice uh, that people were really supporting me personally, even like writing me so many messages. Because obviously the the people who are like yeah who are like the bosses. Uh, sorry, sorry. Honey. Uh, Happy sorry, Father's yes. Day, by the way. Happy late Father's Day. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, sorry, honey. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry about that. So, people people who, who were, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, who are like uh, vocal on the internet, obviously saying bad things. Some people are, let's say, not brave enough to the, put their opinion, even if it is completely opposite opinion. Because some high stakes people know me for years. They, yeah, they text me. Yeah, I know it's 0% you did something wrong and so on. But uh, yeah, even I, I want to thank you for all the like fans which uh, making photos. I get more photos yesterday than Daniel Negreanu for sure I kind of hate it so people please do that quickly I'm trying not to be rude yeah I it can be rude but I, I just don't enjoy it too much but yeah now it's uh, like that so but I'm really grateful for that support and basically uh, basically this uh, thing is now reality I need to uh, defend that but uh, I'm happy for big people who are around me who just like yeah I have like a lot of people which really knows me so there's like uh, great support from them so I'm happy for that. And uh, as I said, uh, yeah, this is the maximum I can do. I don't know what else I can do with that. It's completely crazy. But uh, yeah, this is what it is. And uh, for the end, I would like to apologize to all people, which maybe I somehow make you offended or what is the word? Uh, it was at the table. It was not my intention. Hopefully you will enjoy playing with me in the future, like in my opinion, major majority does. And if not, just speak with me and I am like a human being. I am not, I'm not, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not an asshole, which maybe some people think because they saw, they, they, the information which they know about me is few clips of final tables in the poker where I am trying to have fun and trying to play my style, which is for sure unorthodox, but what? Yeah. So I would like to address this, apologize, because for me, uh, there is no joy in harming people or whatever. I feel that this was not happening too much. But yeah, as I, uh, I want to address the facts. I did not receive any warning and in penalty. Uh, if you ever sit with me at the poker table and you don't like anything, just talk with me. It's it's good. It's even unbelievable for me. I need to defend against these stupid allegations, but hope I did make uh, the things clear. And thank you so much, Doug, that you gave me the space. It's uh, I I actually really appreciate it. Yeah, I hate to do that, but I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, see you guys at the tables or doing something together. Uh, as I said, if you wanna do some better things than poker, you can contact me. Yeah that's it okay all right well that's it that's gonna be a wrap here thank you guys for tuning in martin's words direct from the source the other side of the story will definitely be staying tuned on this as the saga moves forward thank you for taking the time martin for coming on today Ciao. all right that's gonna be it by the way guys subscribe to the channel i'm trying to drive subscribers for some reason you watch you don't subscribe show a little love to the stream See you guys later. Thank you. Peace. Am I still online? Am I still online? You are, but for 